Firstly, I think we've already heard a little bit about what the priorities are over the next coming year. Australia is taking over the coordination of MICTA in September, and the Foreign Minister and the other ambassadors have talked a, a little bit about the program, and that includes the key development meetings coming up in Addis Ababa, another one, the post-2015 agenda. We've got COP21 with the climate change agenda. We are expanding, looking to expand the trade and economic aspects of MICTA with the Business Forum. Uh, and we are also looking forward to the retreat next year. We have counter-terrorism on the agenda. Uh, we are also keen on the idea of having gender issues. So there's quite a lot of issues that MICTA can take forward. And I think the ambassadors and others have already mentioned these uh, and the type of issues that MICTA will look to, look to uh, follow up on. I suppose probably the, what I'll try to address is a little more how are we going to do this? I mean, how does MICTA actually work in a concrete manner? to get that practical cooperation we want on these issues. I'll probably first to start off by saying that the dialogue that MICTA has generated itself is important. I mean, if you'd mentioned the word MICTA a few years ago, people wouldn't have even known what you were talking about. The mere word of MICTA, I think, generates a bit of interest. Why are these countries getting together? And again, you had explained to me why MICTA is a sensible grouping to deal with global governance issues and many other issues in the world today. That fact that the foreign ministers get together three times a year is extremely important. It's a forum that wouldn't have been happening a few years ago, and as has been pointed out, it also increases that bilateral interaction considerably. So you know, our foreign minister gets to see the Mexican foreign minister several times a year, which wouldn't have happened without MICTA. So we can't underestimate just the importance of the fact that we have these dialogues in place at such a senior level in our governments. But of course we want it to go beyond the dialogue. We want to be able to get practical cooperation and practical work done on these global issues. Uh, we've talked again about the joint statements. You've heard about those. The joint statements are an extremely important mechanism for MICTA, for their work. It's five very diverse countries, common in lots of ways, but very diverse in other ways lending a joint voice to some of the most important issues of the day. I don't think you can underestimate just how important that mechanism is. And Australia as coordinator will be continuing to use that mechanism uh, with, of course, the cooperation and the assistance of all the other MICTA countries and the initiatives of the MICTA countries to use that mechanism to really promote the v a view from the perspective of the very diverse countries of MICTA. Beyond the joint statements, though, we can do a lot of other work. And Talking about the, for instance, development agenda towards the end of the year, we've said we've got Addis Ababa coming up, we've got the post-2015. Our missions in New York are working very closely together in advance of these meetings. And they can cooperate well and they can look for, potentially for solutions on parts of the negotiations where we can find common ground. You know, it might not be solving the whole problem, but there might be specific issues within these negotiations where the five MICTA countries could get together and think, we can find a solution which can suit many different regions, many different stages of development. We could further do that by perhaps issuing a non-paper on specific issues. So, uh, you know, we can put a position paper together that stimulates discussion, again, coming from the very, very diverse areas uh, that the MICTA countries represent. And again, it's another way of working in a cross-regional way that can advance negotiations in an international forum. So we'll be looking to do more of that, particularly in the second half of the year with the very difficult meetings that are coming up, which will be very, which we will really be wanting MICTA to contribute concretely to. Uh, there are other options as well, of course. Uh, we've heard about workshops that are going forward. Uh, there might be a, I think, a planned cybersecurity workshop in Korea in the second half of the year. They're doing workshops on perhaps on peacekeeping and also setting up networks of experts. And again, as uh, Ambassador Kim mentioned, there's already a network of cyber security. So we've already got concrete networks being set up by MICTA countries. So there's all those different ways that MICTA can cooperate together to really take forward these, these challenges that are facing the world, world today. Um, beyond that, we, of course, we have the exchanges, and again, you've heard a lot about the exchanges. These are 
tracks which can almost run on their own. They get their own momentum. And I think that's another good thing as MICTA matures, as it develops. It won't rely on the government going out saying, oh, why don't we do this? It provides leverage for areas all across the economy and culture to say, well, MICTA is an avenue where we can explore to create further exchanges and create closer links between these countries. And one of the aspects that uh, our foreign minister is very interested in, as she mentioned in her speech, was the soft power, as we call it. We are working on the hard power stuff. We've been doing that for several years. What we want to look at is increasing those exchanges in cult culture and science and technology and really getting those links together a lot more firmly between countries. That can be bilaterally sometimes. We can leverage bilateral actions, but we can also do the more general MICTA countries, perhaps in tandem with the foreign minister's meeting. We, you know, we, could do a, a, we could have a MICTA football competition, for instance. Somebody mentioned a MICTA master chef, where we could find ways to make kimchi out of Vegemite. <laughs> so there's lots of, lots of ideas. And of course, from foreign affairs DFAT's point of view, we'd be happy to hear people's ideas. Yeah, what is a good, good activity that MICTA can take forward? So I think the thing about MICTA is the excellent work done by Mexico in setting, doing the first year, coordinating the first year, by Korea by taking it forward. The structure's in place, and I think what you'll find is in a few years' time, we'll see cooperation amongst MICTA countries that we don't even envisage now, because the structure's there, the momentum will be there, and people will come up with their own ideas that will take that forward. Anyway, thank you very much.